Neon is currently the most hated streamer who has seemingly risen to superstardom overnight for trolling people online. But in reality, Neon's controversial career has a deeper story. Ever since he captured the interest of the online community by clickbaiting, lying, berating others, and acting like a total clown on streams, Neon's reputation as a quirky, nerdy kid has changed to be a toxic cloud chaser, saying and doing whatever he wants to go viral. Whether it's blatant racism, sexist and body shaming rants, or faking his own deaths for clicks, it's undeniable that Neon's pathological behavior effortlessly rakes in millions of viewers each month at just 19 years old. And it's no surprise as to why. Neon knew exactly who he needed to connect with, to explode his growth and to take streaming to the next level. Because just a couple months prior, Neon struggled to get 100,000 views per month. But now, he's streaming with some of the largest names in the industry and continues creating new connections with names in high places. However, before we explore the dangerous repercussions Neon has faced as a result of his disrespectful online persona, we first need to understand why he was acting like this in the first place. Neon or Rangesh Mutama's journey began back in 2016 when he was just a 12-year-old kid making NBA 2K17 videos in his bedroom. From the jump, it was obvious he was all about the clout life, pushing the envelope with over-the-top antics and an unmistakable thirst for attention, pulling outrageous publicity stunts, trolling his fans with aggressive jabs, and stirring the pot in ways that would forever scar his reputation. One of the most memorable moments? Faking his death. When Neon had about 240,000 subscribers, a video was uploaded to his channel saying he was dying. The story was that Neon had a seizure and a brain tumor. Everyone who thinks this is a joke, bro, this stuff that's happening is not something to joke around about. If you guys are making fun of me or laughing or saying it's fake, then you guys are just terrible people. Fast forward to December 16, 2019, and the internet got the news that Neon had passed away. Fans were heartbroken, thinking that a young kid had just passed away. However, just a few days later, Neon was back, saying he had somehow survived the surgery. This immediately sparked suspicions about the timeline of events within his community. How can someone be announced dead and just come back to life? Things did not add up. And unfortunately for Neon, a YouTuber named JT exposed him to have planned his death for views. People were unsurprisingly outraged that a YouTuber would gladly manipulate the emotions of his audience or make little of a sensitive subject for profit. But on the other hand, as we all know, all publicity is good publicity. Neon faking his own death was a necessary evil to kickstart his channel into virality and gave him the first taste of fame he so desperately craved for. However, with Neon seeing as his fake death scheme worked, the focus of his channel shifted into short-lived, shock value clickbait videos. For instance, Neon strategized around sensitive topics like meeting someone with coronavirus. Neon was well aware that this video would effortlessly capture the masses' interest during the pandemic, and he made the calculated decision to exploit the situation for his own gain. Despite his claim of encountering a COVID-infected individual, the video predominantly dominantly showcased gameplay from Fortnite, and the manipulation of clickbait titles and thumbnails only intensified. A few days passed and JT once again directed his criticism towards Neon's content, exposing the deceptive nature of his videos. This event prompted Neon to finally express remorse for his misdeeds. Consequently, he took the step of removing both the fake death and COVID-related videos from his channel. It's unmistakably obvious how thirsty Neon was for recognition, his desperation driving him to venture into extreme measures to capture attention. This pursuit of fame led him to the point where he was willing to endure public humiliation and the potential lifelong stigma of his online personality. Skipping to May 2023, following a long hiatus from social media, Neon re-emerged with an unexpected move that surprised the online community. Collaborating with both Aiden Ross and Sneeko, Neon interviewed transgender TikToker Gorlock the Destroyer, also known as Alweezy. However, during this interview, Neon showed a complete lack of restraint, directing a barrage of insults towards her. His offensive remarks extended to fat shaming comments, Hey, Allie, be honest, would you take this guy's virginity? <laughs> Go to chin is like wobbling, what's wrong with you? Even crossing the line by wishing death upon her and that somebody should break into her house and shoot her. It was an action that caught even Sneeko off guard. I genuinely hope someone comes to your house and in the head, you hippo, you bitch. Oh no. I finished, I fuck this cat bitch. How the fuck you wake up like that? How do you not no, please tell me. Bro, please I'm... Tell me. No, How do you not no. want to just up your fat or in response, Sneeko unexpectedly decided to leave the interview either because he was laughing off camera or wanted to protect his own image. Either way, it was a move that many never expected, given Sneeko's typical tendency to be the one delivering the offensive comments. Are you upset? Well, relax. Come on. Hey. We're all men here. Bro, Sneeko, bro. That's why she's upset, bro. Like, what's wrong with you, bro? I feel bad. What, what can I do to make you more comfortable? Sneeko, be nice to her, bro, for real. She's coming on here. It takes a lot of fucking balls to come on in front of 500,000. It takes a lot of balls. Takes Sneeko, a lot of balls. be nice, bro. Have you ever seen Family Guy? Yeah, someone told me I look. Can you say Lawish? 
Videos of this whole mess spread like wildfire in social media. Neon soaked up the chaotic attention once again, and his ego got another boost. It was clear that Neon didn't care how far he took it with Ali. He was ready to go all out, no matter how much it shocked everyone. Because he saw the numbers going up, and his name trending more every day, he was all in, no matter how controversial things got. However, this was not the only interview where Neon was seen acting extremely disrespectful to other people, as on July 19th, Aiden Ross introduced Neon to Andrew Tate for the first time, in which Neon repeatedly made rude comments towards Tate for no reason. Assalamu alaikum. Hey, bald fuck, assalamu alaikum. I was just about to reply to you, but then you insulted me, and I, I don't think that was necessary. <laughs> You're right, I'm sorry. This resulted in tension between the two for the entire stream, with some back and forth in comedic moments. <laughs> You're telling me a girl is fucking your bald ass over me. Is that SpongeBob on your T-shirt? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. you take your you take your inhaler, G. That'll turn the girls on. Right, Aiden. Well, he's busy with his inhaler because he can't seem to handle air without assistance. <laughs> Neon's geeky, somewhat spoiled personality often made him an easy target for bullying, especially from the notorious YouTuber FoozyTube. This interaction brought millions of new eyes to Neon's name. During Fuzi's Twitch subathon, things took a physical turn, with Neon becoming a target of repeated abuse. Instances were captured where Fuzi gave Neon a wedgie. Why would you say it? Why? No, no, don't do that, my asshole actually- Why do that? What? Put him in a headlock. Oh, you. Or even slapped him across the face. I think I'm perfect. Typically, these actions would provoke strong reactions for most people, leading to physical altercations. Yet Neon's response was a lot different, in that he allowed these things to happen without retaliation. Given what we know from past experiences, it's not uncommon for streamers to adopt personas that don't mirror their true selves. Like Aisho Speed, who portrays a generally toxic character, Neon seems to have crafted his own persona. Maybe this could be what he acts like off camera. A keyboard warrior that runs his mouth on the internet, but backs down to confrontation when confronted in real life. However, it's more likely that this is simply another character or an exaggerated version of himself to entertain his audience. He is well aware that viewers find it amusing when a streamer is bullied by others. This phenomenon isn't unique. We've seen it before, like when Aiden Russ was ridiculed and humiliated by Andrew Tate. Nobody has told me a more stupid decision. I decided to stop going to the gym so I could focus on consuming liquid heroin. You are an idiot, Aiden. The audience tends to consume the drama when their favorite streamer experiences embarrassing confrontations. Unfortunately, Neon's combination of a geeky personality and toxic behavior has inevitably paved the way for future incidents. His toxic and arrogant conduct took a toll, leading him to make a $1,000 bet that no one would dare confront him physically in real life. I'm waiting for the day that a kid tries pressing me IRL, bro. When I travel on the 11th, if you see me IRL, I genuinely want you to fight me, bro. Real shit, bro. I, this is a public announcement. Anyone who sees me IRL, I will give you $1,000 if you beat my ass, bro. No one's fucking touching me. I'm untouched. This exposed a side of him that appeared gullible and naive, considering his son in rise to fame. And eventually, reality caught up with him. On August 1st, 2023, a short 38 second clip surfaced on Neon's Twitter. The video showed three masked individuals seemingly confronting Neon, leaving him visibly humiliated. The clip showed physical confrontation and mockery moments, with the group stealing his shoes and glasses. Neon was forced into labeling himself a bitch, which added to his humiliation. Hey, look whose shoes we got. Got his ass lacking. Come on, bro. Look at this shirt. Written all type of stuff, boy. You know not to come around here talking like that. Yeah. On his ass. Come on, bro. Take his glasses off. How much we taking the video? Right on your phone. You a bitch, right? I'm not bro, what you I'm say. A bitch, I'm a bitch. I'm a bitch. Yeah, yeah, you a fucking bitch. Come on. The initial responses to the clip were diverse. Some viewers expressed empathy and concern for Neon, while others alluded to the potential real-life consequences of provocative online behavior. Honestly, Neon talks too much stuff. He deserves that. All that internet talk had these Neon-like phonies real confident. Neon's bold bet of $1,000, challenging anyone that they couldn't confront him in real life, seemed to backfire in this situation. The incident emphasizes the boundaries between the online world and real-world consequences. For popular content creators, online beefs might spill over to the real world. But Neon didn't realize. After the clip went live, the online community began buzzing with theories and debates. Some questioned the video's authenticity, wondering if Neon staged the distressing event as a bid for attention, a strategy he's already done in the past. And when confronted in real life by a streamer called Your Rage on whether the situation was faked or not, this is what Neon had to say. Like faking getting drunk. Yeah. Why do you say that's fake? It's not fake, bro. You did not get drunk. Like, how are you gonna do get drunk? That. On Allah. I'm about to punch you in the knee, bro. On, no, you not, nigga. On Allah, did you get drunk? No. 
I know you did. No, 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 clip it, clip that. One of the primary reasons for suspicions was the fact that the video appeared on Neon's own Twitter account. I mean, why would he share such an encounter on his own platform, especially one that showed him in an extremely humiliating position? Maybe he did actually get beat up and thought, why not just capitalize off this situation? But we'll never know for sure. With various questions, concerns for Neon's well-being and safety were still being discussed online. And on August 3rd, Neon posted a video announcing he was quitting. The video kicked off with an unexpected twist, with Neon claiming he was nothing more than a disgrace to his race, community, and religion, and that he has never reached a point in his career where he never wanted to show his face online again. It's been terrible, I'm a joke. I am a disgrace to my community, I'm a disgrace to my race, I'm a disgrace to my religion, I'm a disgrace, I'm a fucking joke! I'm a joke! However, his community quickly caught on again, with some calling him out for scripting the video, and others pointing out how this was a great learning opportunity for Neon. This kid is obviously lying and getting views off this. Good. Get humbled. This is what the generation deserves. This is what happens when you don't get in touch with reality and face adversary. The situation even prompted notable figures like Andrew Tate to weigh in, and despite Neon previously insulting him, Tate showed his support and offered to help him, posting a video expressing remorse for the incident. Andrew started the video by highlighting the dangers of disrespectful trolls running their mouths on social media before eventually tying back to the Neon situation. Tate concluded the video by personally advising Neon to be more respectful to people online and inviting him to visit Romania for guidance on self-defense in both the real and digital world. What I saw what happened to Neon does not surprise me, but it still made me a bit sad. If you want to fly here, if you want to learn to train, if you want me to tell you how to deal with this and become the best version of yourself, talk to you about it. In response to Tate's message, Neon released a video accepting his offer to help. I've talked to Andrew Tate one time, I was saying the most weird shit ever, I was violating him for no reason, and this guy wants to come out out of nowhere and says he wants to help me. I accept your offer. Um, I would love to come and for you to help me. Following a low point, Neon opted for a transformative change, and one week later, he marked this by shaving his head bald, a gesture reminiscent of Aiden Ross's similar action for the same reason. However, unlike Aiden, Neon appeared committed to his transformation. When I first covered Aiden's failed redemption arc a couple months back, we covered all the reasons why Aiden Ross will never change, yet it remains uncertain whether Neon will follow a similar trajectory. Only time will tell. The problem with Neon is more a tragedy than a simple internet drama. He has an obvious pattern of attention seeking, from faking his death, to the entire internet to fight him, and emotional overreactions like screaming, to going on hateful rants on random strangers, or having tantrums in front of a camera. His actions perfectly echo those of someone with histrionic traits, characterized by attention seeking, dramatic behaviors, and exaggerated emotional responses. This description resonates strongly with Neon's actions, but we can't be that quick to judge. Neon's motivations could stem from various factors, including seeking publicity, financial gain, or even potential mental health challenges. These factors, combined with his actions, pose a risk of spiraling into a dangerous situation for him. Seems like he's unfazed by the potential consequences as long as he continues to garner the desired attention and clout. Despite verbally taking up on Tate's offer to visit him in Romania, Neon has yet to physically do so. Hopefully, Neon will find a way to better himself, and not descend further into the rabbit hole he's solely falling into.